The shoplifting epidemic is largely fake. Over the past year or so, the news has been full of horror stories about shoplifting. The New York Times has called retail theft an epidemic taking over America. The Financial Times has issued dire warnings of surging shopping crime, and Fox News insists the shoplifting crisis is a nightmare. In response to this supposed scourge, retail stores have ramped up their security, locking everything from toothpaste to frozen pizza behind glass. On the campaign trail, Donald Trump has called for more violent measures, saying that police should simply shoot shoplifters as they leave the store. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Shot. Now, though, statistical data shows the reports of an epidemic are highly exaggerated, if not outright made up. In a new report, the Council on Criminal Justice gathered data about retail theft from 24 different U.S. cities. Examining the frequency of reports, the dollar value of items stolen, the number of people involved in each crime, and several other factors. Now, at first glance, it would appear that shoplifting was on the rise in the first half of 2023, increasing by 16% compared to pre-pandemic levels. However, as Herman Lopez notes in the New York Times, the figure depends almost entirely on the inclusion of data from New York City. Remove the Big Apple, and the numbers tell a different story shoplifting has actually decreased in 17 of the 24 cities surveyed and is now fairly rare with just 38.6 reported incidents per 100,000 people and might be happening more often in New York City specifically but an epidemic taking over America it isn't so why does the media perpetuate the idea of a retail theft crisis if the evidence doesn't bear it out Lopez has a few theories, including the fact that many news outlets are based in New York City, the popularity of outlandish anecdotes about crime on social media, and conservative journalists' desire to push a narrative about disorder in liberal cities. Now, these all seem plausible, but as author and civil rights lawyer Alec Karakatsanis points out, there's also a strong class element involved in what kinds of crime are deemed newsworthy to begin with. When the daily news media reports on a crime wave or surge in shoplifting, nearly every time the numbers from the police department fluctuate upward. Note that no similar metaphors are used for decreases. They're almost always using these terms to describe the collective behavior of poor people and other marginalized groups. Things rich people do don't often get this same metaphoric treatment in daily news. How many times do you see a major news story on a surge in tax evasion, a problem over 60 times the magnitude of other reported property crimes, or a wave of crime by oil companies? In other words, petty thefts committed by poor and working class people are treated as a crisis, while the much greater crimes committed by the wealthy are just business as usual. Often, the very retailers who are the loudest about shoplifting, like Walmart and Target, are complicit in things like child labor themselves. But real justice would mean inverting this relationship and treating the criminals in the world's boardrooms and executive suites as the real threat. For more news, visit the Current Affairs News Briefing at currentaffairs.substack.com.